Hi everyone, it's eCartman12 and welcome to my full review of the HTC Desire S. Now, I've been using this phone for about a week and I've been very, very impressed with it. Now, let's give you a quick rundown on the specs. This phone has an internal storage of 1.1 gigabytes and you can expand that with up to a 32 gigabyte micro SD card. It has 768 megabytes of RAM. It has a 1450 milliamp hour battery on the back. And also, as for sensors, it's got a G sensor, digital compass, proximity sensor, and ambient light sensor. For multimedia, this supports audio of AAC, AMR, OGG, M4A, MID, MP3, WAV, WAV and WMA. And video, yeah, it supports 3GP, 3G2, MP4, WMV, AVI, and XVID. And those are really, really good, the last two. Those are really useful and perform very good on this phone. And now for the camera. It's got a 5 megapixel camera on the back with an LED flash. And it can record 720p HD video. And if you want to see the camera performance and HD video uh, footage, then uh, please click on, uh, go on to my last video where I cover the camera and the HD video. And it records in 3GP. And you also have a VGA front-facing camera, which is a fixed focus camera. VGA resolution. And that is it for the specs. Now, let's talk about uh, the, the bad things that are about this phone. We'll get those out of the way, then talk about the really, really good things for the phone. Now, you saw in my unboxing video, I said this was an AMOLED capacitive touchscreen. This is not an AMOLED screen. I've uh, found out that it's in fact a super LCD screen. Why they did not put an AMOLED touchscreen on here, I do not know. But if th they did with the last HTC Desire, and if this is supposed to be its superior, they should have given it a, an AMOLED screen, or probably a, you know, a slightly more improved version of the AMOLED screen, or something better. Because if the, the main attraction for smartphones these days is the screen, and if it's not an AMOLED screen, but is a super LCD, that does not make really make it a superior to the last device in uh, terms of the screen. And it's still a great screen, don't get me wrong, but AMOLED is better than a Super LCD. And uh, another bad point is the 720p HD video recording. You saw in my last video that the, cam uh, the camera uh, produces fantastic photos, but the video recording I don't really like the microphone quality of the video recording, that sound is pretty terrible. And the video quality is acceptable. It's not the best, it's not proper 720p, but it's acceptable. The other thing I don't like is that the uh, speaker at the back is a very good quality, but on the highest volume it does distort quite a bit, especially if someone is shouting in a video. You really do hear that. And what I also don't like about the speaker is its positioning. When I'm watching a video and I tend to just say watch a video and I just lay it on the table, for example, you do you do tend to get a lot of the sound blocked out because the speaker is at the back, whereas if it's on the front or at the side, it would have been much much better to listen to uh, all your videos and stuff. So you're not going to want to lay this on a table or anything because then this will be blocked out all the sounds. So I don't like the placement of the speaker at all. And the other thing I don't like is the earpiece. Um, it's quite clear, but it does get muffled when I'm uh, when I'm using it to take make calls. And uh, the handset, I've noticed that it does lag at times when I'm uh, doing certain things with it. When I am uh, say I'm going on to uh, sometimes the web browsing, at times it won't pinch to zoom, and sometimes there are some glitches in the actual sense interface. I've noticed that when I swipe to a screen, for example, the Twitter widget tends to only show a little bit of picture right around over here and then the rest of it disappears and, and until I just swipe here and then it brings the full picture so it does tend to have some problems but in, or, in order to resolve these problems it's best to give it a restart and that's what I find you're gonna have to do quite a bit with this handset after a few days it does tend to slow down so you're gonna want to res give it a restart and then it'll bring it back up to speed um, apart from that those are all my little uh, those are all bad points out of the way now let's move on to the really really good things now one of the things which I really, really do love in this phone is the 1 GHz processor. It has been very, very responsive, and it, when I'm uh, web browsing or playing games, 
it is a very, 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 very smooth sort of experience. I have an N64 game uh, in the background right here. And I continue this. You can see how it plays. Emulated games. This is Star Fox 64. Please excuse my uh, bad sort of gameplay. I'm not very good at playing this game. But that gives you a quick example. It plays games very, very well. And it, the touch sensitive buttons, I actually really. Let me just turn this off. I really like the touch sensitive buttons. They're very, very sensitive. And when I press them, they have a sort of tactile feedback. So you know once you've pressed them. And uh, when you uh, do press them, it's like uh, they are very, very sensitive. So. But they're very, very sensitive, so it's very, very easy to just quickly tap on this to go out of the screen. So I do prefer these over buttons now after I've uh, had a fair amount of time with these. And I really am used to it. And um, outgoing call quality. P I've, uh, recipients of my calls were saying that the outgoing call quality is very, very clear. This had been coming out extremely clear. But as I said, incoming call quality is a little bit muffled. Now that might have something to do with the person on the other end of the call, but from my experiences that has been a bit of a muffled speaker. And the other thing I like is that it's nice and light. It doesn't really feel heavy. It feels like you don't really have anything in your pocket once you put it in there. It weighs only 130 grams, and that's with the battery. And uh, the build quality is a very, very well-constructed handset. It's got this sort of rubber plastic over there, and on the top, in the middle, is sort of like a nice metal design. And uh, when you two take the battery uh, pack, this little pack of the battery out, it is very, very easy to take off, except if your hands are like uh, sort of oily or a bit uh, wet. It is very quite hard to take out then. And um, I've just uh, really, really liked the build quality of this. It's, and uh, that's something that HTC are very well known for on their handsets, it's the build quality of the phones that they produce. And as I said before, the camera takes great photos, okay HD video, and the flash does help a lot. And you also have Gorilla Glass on the front. Now this is something that I did not really notice when I got the phone, but for those of you that don't know, Gorilla Glass is a really, really durable glass. You, uh, you see videos on YouTube of people using a kitchen knife and scraping the Gorilla Glass screen and uh, it, the screen comes undamaged and no marks or anything so Gorilla Glass, I'm very very happy that they use Gorilla Glass on this mobile phone and um, the 3.7 inch screen, I really like that M most of these uh, mobile phones nowadays are coming out with, four in with uh, 4 inch screens and now they're coming up with 5 inch screens they're really getting big now the 3.7 inch screen is not too big, well it's uh, a decent size but it's not too small, it's not too big either, and it's really pocketable, this mobile phone. And uh, the text is really, really nice and crisp on uh, here. Let's see if I can uh, show you on camera. Yeah, the text is really, really nice and crisp. But although, if you bring your eyes sort of close, you can notice some lines on the screen. And uh, again, an AMOLED screen would have resolved that, but they stuck to uh, a super LCD screen in this one. And another thing I really like is uh, scenes. And uh, this is a specific to HTC handsets. You can go to skins. You can uh, select a skin. Let's just select this one right here. It gives it the boot, little boot screen logo. And here you go. All your widgets and placements, everything is the same, except now it's giving you a sort of brushed metal sort of look on your widgets and on your little home screen here and instead of it being a sort of bubble on this little area down there it's sort of like a sort of square now as well and when you tap an icon it also shows it like that as well so I've been very very pleased with uh, the skins and it's really customizable Android but HTC have taken it to another level you can see the Twitter widget it's pretty much turned into a completely different design and I really really am liking the HTC Sense overlay on these Android handsets they give you fantastic widgets and pretty much complete the Android experience. And also, web browsing works very, very well on HTC handsets. So, let's go on to my website right here. On-screen keyboard I really, really like as well. There's my website right there. And now, many of you know this, the HTC are also very, very well known for this, is that, look, you can't re really read this text right here, but I can pinch to zoom in 
and the browser reformats the text, reflows it, so I could just scroll up and down to read it. Something I hate about all other mobile phones is that you, while you're reading an article, you know in your head that, okay, you're, about to, you're gonna have to scroll right and left to read this part of the text now. But HTC let you reflow the text, and I found this very, very nice. It really completes the browsing experience. And you can go an even nearer, and the browser reformats that text beautifully, and it's really nice and crisp. And you can go into landscape view, and you can continue reading your article and pinch to zoom in even more. And that's all the way you can go in. And if you pinch to zoom out, you can see the text there. And again, like I said, you can pinch to zoom in. And this, uh, this handset also supports Flash, which is something I really like about Android as well. Flash, flash on the mobile phone really is a very, very nice experience. You can go on to any video, and uh, the video will just load up within the browser and here's my video loading up from the browser now what's great about this is there are some YouTube videos that do not allow you uh, to sort of watch your videos on a mobile device they don't allow you to do that with a YouTube app but since you have flash enabled on this those videos you can watch them on your phone and Flash does work very, very well. It does lag a bit at times. I think it does need a bit of polish. But other than that, Flash is a welcome addition. So, that was uh, lots of the great and awesome features of the uh, HTC Desire S. I really, really like it. The fact that you can customize pretty much anything you want on Android is a really big plus point. And uh, you've got many, many sorts of um, wallpapers here. My favorite one is HTC Sense. And uh, yeah, Peep and TweetDeck, all, all my applications work perfectly on this. And um, I'm really, really digging the Android operating system. I find it much better than a Apple's iOS. I get very, very bored of Apple's iOS, but where I find this very, very fun to use. And it gives you a sort of pleasure and joy out of using it. And it is very productive. And the Android Marketplace, which I'll cover in a separate video, is not is uh, short sure hasn't got the sort of uh, number of apps that you have on uh, App Store, but I found that uh, it, uh, sure this doesn't have the biggest uh, you know the same the same the same number of apps that uh, the App Store has, but this is much much better because it does not have it's not sort of a uh, piled uh, you know and filled with lots of crappy apps. Apple say they got so many apps in their App Store, whereas I'd say a big percentage of it is full of fart apps and apps that are like uh, that don't work or apps that say they could do something but they can't so I love the Android marketplace better the fact that it has uh, apps that actually work uh, anyway guys that was my review of the HTC Desire S I think it is a fantastic mobile phone and um, I'm really really liking it you can currently pick this up for around about 320 pounds sim free in the UK and I think that is pretty good, especially considering that all these uh, other handsets with the uh, dual core processors uh, cost around the, around about the five hundred pound mark. Thank you so much for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe so you can uh, check out my future videos. And again, please subscribe to my videos if you like them. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.